And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. This is your boy Fly Island Guy. Today we are back in the 737 as you can see. Uh, we are also back in Freeport. And we're going to be heading over to Havana, Cuba today. So uh, flight time for that is going to be about an hour and 10 minutes or so. And we cruise at 36,000 feet. As far as weather is concerned, uh, we are looking at, well, pretty nasty weather right now around uh, Freeport. There's actually a hurricane. I don't know if I could bring it up here. And I'm just going to refresh really quick. Yes, yeah, so there's, there's actually um, a hurricane here right 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 next to freeport um right now it's kind of affecting the the cloud situation but uh we're not we're not really dealing with too much rain at the moment or um heavy winds uh right now winds out of 150 at uh 60 knots so things here aren't too bad in terms of getting out of here so I can imagine we're going to probably hit some pretty heavy chop like once we get up and into the clouds. Uh, but yeah, once we once we get up and over the weather, it should be all right. And uh, things are not too bad in Havana. Actually, let's go and take a look at that. Uh, MUHA. Oops. That is the wrong thing. Uh, MUHA. Here we go, Jose Marti. Yeah, looking at uh, MBFR, MBFR conditions there. Um, winds out of 220 at uh, 13 knots. We've got some good visibility as well. Temperature 29 degrees C. So, shouldn't be too bad. Um, but yeah, my main concern right now is getting out of uh, report. So, Head up to the flight deck and uh, right now we are pretty much uh, ready to go. Got a few one in just now for some reason and I'm not too sure why. Okay. All right. Um, so we'll actually get ready to start our pushback now. Uh, we've started the APU. Uh, so we are, yeah, good to go. Let's look up top and let's get our anti-collision lights on. Uh, let's set our cabin altitude as well. Got to go up to 360. As I mentioned, and we can go ahead and start our pushback. Cockpit to ground. This is ground. Stand by. Kind of waiting to get the okay. Okay, sir. The bypass pin is installed. All doors and hatches closed and all ground equipment is removed. Standing by for pushback. Awesome. Okay. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We are cleared for start and push. Okay, cleared for push start. Parking brakes are released. Commencing pushback. You can start the engines in sequence. It will start in the sequence. I should have forgot to close the doors. 
<laughs> Whoops. All right. Cool. Trucks out the way. <laughs> we did not see that. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get these engines started. Oh, what's going on? There we go. So, I'm gonna shut the packs off. APU bleed on, and let's get the right engine started. Let's start to push Talk back as well. Ground. This is ground. Stand by. Okay, sir. The bypass pin is installed. All doors and hatches closed and all ground equipment is removed. Standing by for pushback. Ground. Please cancel pushback operation. Alright. I kind of messed that up. I think I closed it by mistake. Alright. Forgot to give fuel to the engine as well. But as I said, we're really like <laughs> learning this aircraft still. Second full flight I'm attempting in it. Alright, we'll go ahead and start the left engine. Alright, so both engines are started, so we are good to go. Gonna go ahead and uh, get our flaps. Gonna go flaps 5. Alright. Okay, and let's see what else we have to clean up up top. I uh, believe now that both engines are started, we could turn on our generators and we could stop the APU. The APU bleed can come off as well. We don't need that. And. Once again, this is another short flight. Don't have any fuel in the center tank, as you can see right here. So, don't really need to have those on. And yeah, everything else looks good. I should set our landing altitude as well. Uh, I'm just going to double check that. Let's 
So I think landing altitude is the same as airport elevation, which is 210 feet. We'll do, do 250, that's fine. All right, and yeah. Packs to come back on. And let's get out of here, folks. Uh, set our auto brakes to RTO. Landing lights and com oh, sorry, taxi lights and come on as well. Yeah, I think we're all set. Okay. All right, now we're departing runway two four. And runway two four is a bit of a taxi out. Okay. Alright. So yeah, if you guys remember the <laughs> our flight into Freeport was pretty freaking horrible. Um Yeah. Pretty freaking horrible, so we ended up uh, <laughs> really kind of white knuckling it coming in. I really love this view. Oh shoot, <laughs> I scared off the runway, the taxiway. Yeah, we're just hoping that this flight is going to be a little better. Um, just really trying to learn the ropes, understand exactly what's going on. And um, hopefully get better and better flying the 737, which I don't think I, I would have caught on to this fast. But um, it's definitely a lot of good tutorials out there. Now this aircraft's been out for a little while, so um, and a lot of people had the 737 from from other uh, simulators. I'm honestly still a bigger fan of the Airbus. Oh, it's good this way. But I feel like the Boeing aircraft kind of makes a little more sense in terms of uh, well, it's a little more sense, and it seems to be a little more popular amongst uh, simmers. So I decided to go this route, but I think. Now that I've had time to play around with this, um, I might go back and try the might try the 
737 sorry the, the A320 A320 Neo uh, the mod that's been out for, for a while or maybe try the Phoenix Simulations uh, aircraft as well So what I want to keep an eye on is if something's actually coming. I just saw an aircraft over there. Yeah. All right, the lights on that are a little off, but it's okay. thing I don't understand is why the, the engine sounds in the front of the aircraft are louder than in the back. That's kind of weird. We're gonna get our landing lights on. Alright, so already got our trim set, uh, flaps are set, we turn our landing lights on, uh, auto brakes set to RTO, um, gonna arm the auto throttle, and yeah, flight directions are on, yeah, I think we're good to go. All right, folks, let's get out of here. Got a quick look out the windows. Alright. 
parts. I'm gonna go ahead and lock the gear. Bring those flaps up. So we're just doing a little bit of a turn right now as it captures the like there's a uh, VOR right above the airport and that's our worst press waypoint so we didn't have to do it this way but um, I'm just kind of letting the aircraft do its own thing Airlines have it's having a bit of a time holding a two five zero. That's okay though. So you can see lots of rough clouds in the area because of that hurricane. The clouds are extremely low. Right, we crossed over 10,000. Get these landing lights off. Uh, taxi lights can come off as well. Alright, aircraft now is accelerating to... 303 knots, which is a weird value, but <laughs> that's what it's doing. Alright, forgot to set LNAV as well. Shoot. So we're kind of way off course right now. At least I think we are. I don't know. Actually, maybe not. I know we are. Okay. Don't, don't know why we're in hand select. I don't remember hitting that, but... Yeah. Let's get back on course. <laughs> so we are way off course right now. Way, way, way off course. Alright, there we go. So 
So I'm just turning the plan to kind of get us to intercept the correct course. Don't know how we got that far off. Alright, set our standard um, Yeah, set our standard uh, barometric pressure since we crossed 18,000 feet So yeah, there's still a couple things I need I need to learn, especially for takeoff. Um, for takeoff, I feel like we're shooting past, kind of shooting past our takeoff speed. I'm not not really too sure why. Maybe because I'm switching it over to VNAV. Maybe I should just put it into um, speed mode. Don't know. But uh, it's just one of many things for me to play with. All right, see if I can set L nav now. I cannot. Possibly because we're a little ways out. Well, in the meantime, while I'm trying to sort that out, uh, let's take a quick look in, at uh, Havana. Let's see what Havana's all about. So I chose Havana because this is one of the, the uh, destinations that the Bahamas Air flies to. Which I think it's pretty cool. Uh, so, so you all know Havana is the capital city of Cuba. In fact, my uh, my girlfriend is in Cuba right now as we speak. Hopefully, enjoying herself. <laughs> uh, that's also kind of what inspired me to do this flight. Um, but, yeah. Just looking at a site here that says, On first impressions, Havana can seem like a confusing jigsaw puzzle, but work out how to put the pieces together, and a beautiful picture emerges. So it says here, it's complicated. Like, no one could have... Uh, no one could have invented Havana. It's too audacious, too contradictory... And despite 60 years of withering neglect, too damn beautiful. So how it does it is anyone's guess. Maybe it's the long history of piracy, colonialism, and mobs to rule. Perhaps it's the survivalist spirit of a populace scarred by two independence wars, a revolution, and a U.S. trade embargo. Or possibly, it's something to do with the indefatigable salsa energy 
that ricochets off walls and emanates most emphatically from the people. Don't come here with a list of questions, just bring an open mind and prepare for a long, slow seduction. It's a great art city, and it may not be like the scene in Paris or New York quite yet, but Havana's art culture is one of the city's biggest surprises. Ah, getting my out nav now. The creativity is nothing new. Human artists have been quietly challenging cultural elites since the age of Jose Nicolas de la Escalera and his depictions of enslaved black people. Today the work of Escalera and others is splendidly displayed in the Museo Nacional de Bellas Artes, while newer, racier crews congregate for electrifying happenings at the Fra Fabrica de Art Cubano and or take to the streets with the rollers and brushes in Hav Havana uh, Habana Vieja. So despite recent economic difficulties, there's really been a better time to visit Havana. Private businesses from tra trancy cafes to indie t-shirt makers have sparked a creative renaissance while big name brands from that well-known friend of me in the north have yet to dilute the culture of magic. So as a result, the city bursts with experimentation. Here a boutique hotel where bar stools are fashioned out of bicycles. There a community project where the barbershop is also a museum. Maybe it's something they put in the mojitos, but the ability of habaneros to endure and persevere is one of the most inspiring traits. In Havana, history is piled up like a hoarded treasure in a dusty attic, except these days, thanks to proactive city historian Eusebio Leal Spengler, the colonial thoroughfares look a little dusty. Leal Spengler has been nailing Havana's exhausted infrastructure back together piece by piece for more than 30 years, and the results are startling. Walk the streets of Havana Vieja today, and you'll likely feel a genuine connection with the past and imposing coastal fortifications an intimate traffic plaza stuffed with museums. Equally engrossing are the scattered leftovers from Cuba's more recent marriages with the USA and the USSR. So, that's a cool, like, well worded uh, document on uh, Cuba, on Havana, sorry. And we'll just look at some of the more traditional statistics. Um, let's see. As mentioned before, Havana lies on the northern coast of Cuba along the Straits of Florida, south of the Florida Keys, where the Gulf of Mexico joins the Atlantic Ocean. And the city extends mostly westward and southward from the bay which is entered through a narrow inlet and which divides into three main harbors, Marimelina, Guanaba Guanabacoa, and Antares. The Almendares River tra traverses the city from south to north, entering the Straits of Florida a few miles west of the bay. There are low hills in which the city lies gently from the waters and the straits. I know where the elevation is a 200 foot high limestone ridge that slopes up the east and culminates in the heights of La Cabana and El Moro. The sites of Spanish fortifications overlooking the eastern bay. Another notable rise is the hill to the west that is occupied by the University of Havana and the Castillo de Principe. So in terms of demographics, according to the 2012 uh, Official census, population is 58.4% white of Spanish de Spanish descent. Uh, mestizo and mulatto, mixed race, 26.4%, 15% black, and Asian, 0.2%. Uh, 
So as with other Caribbean nations, there are a few mestizos, or, or as we said before, mixed race people in Havana and Cuba as a whole, in contrast to many other Latin American countries, because the indigenous Taino population was virtually wiped out by Eurasian disease in the earliest period of the Spanish conquest. The city's significant minority of Chinese, mostly Cantonese ancestors, were brought in the mid 19th century by Spanish settlers via the Philippines with work contracts, and after completing eight year contracts, many Chinese immigrants settled permanently in Havana. Uh, before the revolution, the Chinese population counted to over 200,000. Today, Chinese ancestors could count up to 100,000. Chinese born or native Chinese, mostly Cantonese as well, are around 400 presently. There are some 3,000 Russians living in the city, as reported by the Russian embassy in Havana. Most of them women married to Cubans who studied in the Soviet Union. And Havana also shelters other non Cuban population of, of an unknown size. There's a population of several thousand North African teen and preteen refugees. And between 2018, the most recent census and the mid 20th century census of 1953, Havana's population has grown by an estimated 87%, a growth rate typical of most Latin American cities. So, just one last thing look at the population size in Havana. population is, as of 2020, is 2.13 million people, which is crazy, didn't realize it was that big, so that is a little bit about uh, Havana, uh, we are going to just keep on trucking on this flight here, I'm going to pay attention to these instruments, and I also have to climb to 36,000, I think I'm at 35 right now. Um, funny, I don't have a flight up anymore, but I know I was doing a step climb. But I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go up to 36,000 now. And then uh, we will continue on our flight from there. So when I come back, we'll be starting our descent into Havana. And uh, hopefully it's going to be interesting, but not crazy. <laughs> All right. This is your boy, Flyland Guy. I'll be back. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We start our descent into ladies and gentlemen welcome back uh we've started our descent into havana uh havana is actually off to our left right now so i'm just trusting vnav to do what it needs to do <laughs> and uh we shall see how that goes but uh let's go ahead and get up in into the flight deck and uh let's just see where we're at All right, so we are crossing uh, 18,000 feet now. We're, we're actually going pretty fast, man. Like, really, really fast. And this is kind of what I worry about. I know we never will automatically adjust your speed, but at some point we're going to have to slow down to 250. And I'm not sure... Yeah, I'm not sure whether uh not sure whether <laughs> it's gonna do it, but let's see what happens. We're gonna we're gonna try and, and trust things and see how it goes. But we are doing the uh ILS runway zero six approach. Um and we're actually doing the Epmar, it's the Epmar 1 arrivals, what we're actually doing right now, but 
uh, this is kind of close enough to, to what's happening, but it's basically going to be like a big uh, U-shape, and then we're going to come in for the landing in uh, Auto Runway 6. This is making me a little nervous. Just a little bit. Not much though. <laughs> I'm gonna try and slow down just a little bit because I feel like we're coming in a little hot. do a speed intervention here and uh, let's slid on to 250 because we're just about to hit 10,000 feet I met I might have waited too long to do it Okay, that's good. Alright. So I just need to check our flight path really quick. I need to know when we will capture the, the localizer. I think it's going to be after this this turn right here. But our VRF speed uh, is 130 knots at flaps 30. So I think we'll, we'll do a flaps 30 landing today. Maybe we'll just cross through 10,000 feet. So let's get our landing lights back on. I'm just going to arm spoil my spoilers ahead of time. I don't think I'm going to use them again after this. And let's set our brakes to auto brakes two. So I don't think we really need, uh, it's a really long runway that we're going to be landing on. Uh, runway six is let me see, 13,000 feet, <laughs> so yeah, we don't need to worry too, too much about, uh, yeah, we don't need to worry too, too much about uh, uh, running out of runway for sure. Overall, this has been a pretty good flight. I haven't really had much complaints. Um, just really got to get used to, to landing this plane. And I still got to learn about when to actually like put flaps out and all that. Because I honestly don't know. I'm just guessing right now. But around this point is where we need to activate our localizer. So... 
What I'm gonna do is uh, slow down to about 220 knots now. This is really just, uh, just overall just preparation, you know? Things are a little bumpy up here, though. That's interesting. I'm just slowing on even more just so we can kind of take our time to to uh, get into position for landing or get prepared for landing, get stabilized and I'm gonna go flaps one Uh, someone need to let me know if I'm doing this right. Like when to set my flaps and all that. This is all just kind of big guess. I'm not really 100% sure. Flaps one, two, three. I'm just kind of watching our flight, our flight path here. Right. I'm gonna go with flaps five. Getting used to my key bindings. Alright, so as soon as we start making a turn, I'm going to uh, try and intercept the localizer and then we'll get uh, fully ready for landing. And hopefully, it'll be a smooth one. So all I'm really doing is like set my flaps, I'll set my flaps and then kind of reduce the speed to match the, the indicator of where we should be. Now I'm making a turn, so I'm going to go uh, VOR look, hopefully we'll capture it, it's looking good. Just gonna go flaps ten. All right, the runway is directly ahead of us. I think once we hit that next waypoint, uh, we'll go ahead and. Yeah, well, once we hit that next waypoint, we'll go ahead, we'll go gear down, uh, flaps 30, and we're going to prepare for landing, all right? So 
So one out, one nautical mile out. All right, I think they'll get on. Was that would happen. Uh, flaps fifteen. Oh shoot! Approach. Forgot to activate approach mode. And I'm totally above the above it now, so I can't. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take over. Ooh, super high right now. So I'm going to go missed. I'm going to climb back up to <clears throat> I'll stay around 2,000 feet. Right now I'm just, 
doing a quick go around. I'm just going to hand fly this and then uh, just come back in for the landing again. I totally forgot to hit approach mode and <laughs> ended up ended up too high. What I want to try and do just kind of get myself in a position to intercept the localizer again. trying to give myself a little bit of distance between myself and the airport. I think this line right here is showing the localizer. So really just trying to intercept that again. And then I could just shoot the approach properly.
All right, there we go. Going to approach mode now. That's the runway there. Gonna go gear down. Alright, speed brake speed uh, speed brakes are armed, auto brakes are armed. Localizer and the glide slope has been captured. Runway is really hard to see. It's right in front of us, right there. Once I get some better visibility, I'll, I'll just hand fly it in. And we are at flaps 30. I'll take over. Knots. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Havana. I was a little more eventful than I wanted to be. I'm off the runway. And then lights are off. All right. So to get the APU started. Here we go. Alright, so the only thing that 
I'm curious about, and this happened on the last flight as well, is why I'm not getting the call outs when I'm landing. A little curious about that. Um, I'm not too sure why. I have to figure that out. I've set my minimums, all of that good stuff, but nothing. Overshot that a little bit. All right. Uh, let's see, all of our lights are off. Turn the packs off and switch to the APU. All right, so Landing was way more eventful than it was supposed to be. <laughs> um, let us get the doors open. Chocks are on. Jetway. Oops. Uh. Awesome. Beacon is on as well. All right. Yeah. I think we are good to go, folks. So. That is it for today's flight. So we managed to get here in one piece. <laughs> so I'll catch you guys on the next flight. <clears throat> we'll probably head back to Bahamas. And then after that, we'll probably try out like if near line, go somewhere else. Um, but I do kind of want to spend some time in the Caribbean for a little bit um, because I just miss being out here. So that's it for today. I'll catch you guys on the next one. This is your boy Flyling Guy saying they safe and most importantly, they fly. I'm out. Peace.